Hello, we are going to talk about contraception or birth control. They're actually the same thing. Contraception or birth control. Okay, so what is it? What is the purpose of contraception? The purpose of contraception is to prevent fertilization so that we don't have a pregnancy occur. Preventing fertilization is one strategy. Another way is to prevent ovulation. Preventing ovulation would naturally prevent fertilization because there would be no ovum to fertilize. Or lastly, prevent fertilized egg or ovum from being implanted into the uterus. If, let's say, a fertilization has already occurred, if we can somehow prevent that fertilized egg or the embryo from implanting in the uterus, there would be no pregnancy. Okay, so three strategies for avoiding pregnancy. Now, we're going to discuss a few methods in greater detail. Now, first, we're going to divide them into temporary contraceptive methods as well as the more permanent contraceptive methods. The temporary contraceptive methods are not 100% effective, but because they are temporary, they can be used when they are needed. If the person decides they don't want to use contraceptive method anymore, they just don't need to use it anymore. That's it. Now, not all the contraceptive methods are equal. There are a lot of methods, but the most useful, the most successful, the one with the highest chance of preventing a pregnancy is actually the male condom. The male condom is a thin rubber light tube worn over the male's penis. This is considered a form of barrier method because it is something that prevents contact. It prevents the male sperm cells from entering the female reproductive system. Therefore, there can be no chance of fertilization. So is this a 100% foolproof method? As mentioned above, there is no 100% effectiveness here. However, the chance is very high, more than 90%. Why? Male condoms may still tear or burst. In that case, the sperm cells may still enter the female reproductive system. Having said that, the chance is not high. Therefore, it has the reputation of being the most successful temporary contraceptive method. Now, what are all the other methods? All the other methods, as shown over here in the table, are less effective, but we'll go through them anyway. The female condom is a similar barrier method. It is a sheaf of plastic inserted into the vagina, but because it is less secure, it cannot prevent the entry of the sperm cells as well as the male condom does. Therefore, it is considered a less effective method. Another option is to use a diaphragm or a cap. This is also inserted into the female's vagina, but this one should be inserted by doctors instead. It is made of rubber. It will also function as a barrier. Again, it is not as effective. Now, Following that, there are some other more invasive methods. What's invasive? The intrauterine device is an example of an invasive method because this, this one is inserted into the uterus. So you can't do this normally. You require trained medical personnel or doctor to help do this. Now, what does it do? This is not a barrier method per se. It doesn't block the sperm cells from entering. However, it will prevent the lining of the uterus from thickening. Now, if you can recall, the uterine lining is supposed to thicken during a menstrual cycle to prepare for the implantation of the fertilized egg or embryo. If the uterine lining does not thicken, then there can be no implantation. Okay? Then, let's look at some other methods. There are chemical methods. The bottom two in this list are what we call the chemical methods. Spermicide. Spermicide is a poison. It kills sperm cells. 
just like what we would name herbicide, a poison that kills plants, herbs, or weeds. There's also pesticide or insecticide used to kill insects and pests. Spermicide is usually used in conjunction with other devices. We do not just drink spermicide. Spermicide is applied. Usually it is applied onto something like a condom so that if the condom comes into contact with the sperm cells, the sperm cells will be killed. Okay, Spermicide alone is not very effective because the concentrations may vary or there are sperm cells that may not be killed with a low dosage. Now, another form of chemical method is birth control pills. What are birth control pills like? Birth control pills, also known as contraceptive pills, are actually tablets containing the two female hormones, estrogen and progesterone. These are hormones that are normally produced in the female by the ovaries in the course of the menstrual cycle. But if you can recall, the menstrual cycle has fluctuating levels of estrogen and progesterone. So how does eating contraceptive pills help with preventing pregnancy? This is because if the levels of estrogen and progesterone are very high, as is the case when you take these medical pills, your body will not produce any more estrogen and progesterone. And the high levels of estrogen and progesterone will prevent ovulation from occurring. And this is the key point. This is actually the most important thing. A high level of estrogen and progesterone will mimic the part of the menstrual cycle that already has a high level of estrogen and progesterone. Now, if you look back at the old files, if you look back at your old notes on the menstrual cycle, you will see that this is after day 14. Now, let's have a quick look at the changes during the menstrual cycle once again. This part over here, this part over here, after day 14, is where estrogen and progesterone levels are both relatively high. Whenever the levels of estrogen and progesterone are high like this, no ovulation can ever occur again. This is why ovulation occurs only once in every menstrual cycle. Taking the contraceptive pills will trick the body into thinking it is already in this stage. Therefore, there will be no longer any ovulation. Okay? All right. Okay, now we move on to the permanent contraceptive methods. The permanent contraceptive methods are considered to be 100% effective, but with a drawback. Given that they are permanent, the decision is not reversible. At least this is what you learn under your lower sex science because there are actually certain things which can be reversed but may not be so easy to do. We're going to start with the male sterilization. In male sterilization, we call vasectomy. The sperm ducts are cut. Now if you can remember, the sperm ducts have an alternate name. The Latin name for sperm duct is vas deferens. So this is where the term vasectomy comes from in biology or in medical science. Anytime you see ectomy, it means something is being cut and removed. In the case of vasectomy, the vas deferens are cut. But instead of removing, the doctor doesn't really need to remove. After you Cut it like a cord, you can tie it up. Once that's done, sperm cells will no longer enter the penis. Okay, next we have female sterilization. Female sterilization is known as ligation. Ligation is where we cut and tie the fallopian tube. Properly speaking, ligation simply means to tie up something. 
But here we take it to mean that the fallopian tubes or the alternate name oviduct are cut. Once you've cut the oviducts, the ovum cannot travel to the uterus. Therefore, it is impossible for the ovum to be fertilized by the sperm cells or for that zygote or fertilized egg to reach the uterus. Hence, there will be no implantation. Hence, there will be no pregnancy. Okay.